most worshipful Grand Master, the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge, Grand Seven State of New Jersey. Brethren, in the spirit of our 175th anniversary of Prince Hall Grand Master, State of New Jersey, I'd like us all to pause briefly and reflect upon the word brother. And how important it is for us to be a brother in regards to the health, safety, and future of our fraternity. Brother. A brother is your next of kin, your own flesh and blood. He is more than a friend. He is someone that you would lay your life down for. Steve. In a Masonic Lodge, the word brother refers to the men of that mystic time, of that obligation of which we have all seen. Our obligation is more than a formality or organizational oath. Our obligation is our promise to be true to God, our neighbors, and ourselves. Our obligation is our pledge to live up rightly and to love our fellow man. When we assume this obligation, we were essentially declaring that we wish to be in the company of men who share the same values and ideas. By uniting ourselves under this honorable pledge, we became brothers of that ancient and honorable plan, Prince Hall Freemasons. Now, I know every one of us in this room can attest that we have all attended meetings where we address men as Brother Jones and or Worshipful Brother Smith. We use the word brother so often that we are becoming desensitized to his true meaning. If we don't pause and ponder this, I fear that the word brother will become little more than a substitute for mystery or sir. Now, perhaps this is a failing of our institution protocol. Or maybe it's our own fault for overusing the word. We also find that throughout history, unfortunately, that relationships between brothers are not always worthy of emulation. Two of the greatest examples we have are found in the Old Testament. We read in the book of Genesis of Cain murdering Abel. And when God asked of Abel's whereabouts, Cain replied, my, my brother Stephen. We also read of Jacob, who was willing to trick his father Isaac in order to receive his brother Esau's blessings. We need not look far today for similar actions occurring. Our lodges are filled with brothers who resent each other for whatever reason, or who are too stubborn to meet one another on the level. We argue over lost business. And we often neglect our worthy brother Masons who are in need. When I experience these instances, I personally always like to reflect upon my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who would grow up to become a leader who espoused the idea of brotherhood. Of all the lessons Jesus taught, the most important, undoubtedly, was the new command. Love one another. And that's just what we as principal Freemasons and brothers should be doing. Loving one another. For if we love one another, we would act upon the square. We would circumscribe our designs. And we would give relief to our brother Masons who are in need. If we use the word brother out of love and not out of habit, 
then we would truly become a Masonic family. By loving one another, we can fully understand the true meaning of that solemn obligation. One of the personal tenets of our profession is brotherly love. And I propose that we make this our theme for the foreseeable future if we are to ascend. Let us make love a bigger part of the Masonic equation, and then we can remain focused on what it really means and takes to be a brother. We are sought to make an effort to exist and interact in harmony. Harmony founded on brotherly love. That is the foundation. But how do we do this, you may ask? Well, I'm saying, by striving for balance. I recall countless conversations that I've been blessed to have had with one of our dearly departed saints, who I know his spirit is in this room today. None other than Bright Worship, Gary L. Lynn. And we used to always talk about balance and equilibrium and how we were taught this from the earliest stages of our Masonic career. And we would always part with the understanding and agreement that first you have to be balanced within yourself. Then your mind and bodies will be in balance. This means you are in harmony with yourself, in touch with your inner thoughts, able to iron out your own tensions, and rest with certainty that you are focused and complete. If you are focused within yourself, then surely you must have had some success with subduing your passions. If we, as a collective, are balanced within ourselves, it is far less likely that we will be dissatisfied by some of the actions of our brothers. If, on the other hand, we are a boiling cauldron of unsatisfied desires and stunning ambitions, in short, we will be annoyed by all around us. If our hearts and minds are filled with a parade of contending emotions, then we are contentious and unable to be in harmony with anyone. Look, my brothers, the individual who will endeavor to exemplify brotherly love comes closest to heaven on earth. He has no passion for hate, greed, or intolerance. He does not suffer from unhappiness because he has no time for it. He is always looking forward to doing something for someone else. It is his life's mission. He does not be us because he fully understands that all are his brothers. He does not hate for long because he knows that he alone must carry the heavy burden of hate. He does not walk alone because God forever walks with him. What I'm trying to say this morning, my brothers, is that brotherly love is one of the easiest things in the world to do because it helps the giver more than the receiver. Brotherly love is easy to do because it is enjoyable. It is easy to do because it relieves us from our tensions. Brotherly love is easy to do because it is a bright thing. future of our fraternity lies in the hearts of each of us, you and I. 
So if we continue to allow our hearts to guide us to work in the quarry for the principles of Freemasonry, then our fraternity will be one of success. Success and failure, my brothers, is measured in two words, middle and master. If we do just what we have to do and nothing more, then we have not followed our hearts, but the minimum necessary to get by. And our fraternity will definitely be one of struggle and failure. Most worshipful sir, I have faith that everyone today in this room will give a massive effort and success and brotherly love will prevail. My brethren, Prince All Free Masonry is the greatest fraternity on the face of this planet. It is our responsibility to ensure that its luster is not dimmed by any act of our own. When we now at this altar to take our obligation, we made a commitment to this fraternity and its well-being. Let us set aside our trivial differences and renew our community so that future generations can enjoy Prince Hall Freemasonry in all its splendor. This is our challenge. This is our commitment to our future. As people of faith, we are not held captive to our past. This is that moment in history that will set the stage for our new, amazing, and dynamic future. So I ask you all, what will be our focus in years to come? In which direction will our fraternity move? Well, it cannot go forward unless we go beyond our own egos witness the true brotherhood of man and open our hearts to a truth that will not dissolve at the death of our lives. In the holy writings, which rests upon our altar, we read the words, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. My brothers, we are the light. I'll leave you with this. When you're feeling all downhearted and life's hard to understand, say it's fine to feel the pressure of a brother's friendly hand. Just to know he sympathizes. Though he doesn't, Say a word. How it starts your courage finally as your heart is touched and served. With an arm around your shoulder and a grip you love to find. Oh, how it makes you feel the boundary of the hearts of humankind. It's just a little tool of an ever growing band. Their faith and hope and courage in a brother's friendly hand. I love you all, my brothers. Most worship grandmaster orders will be.